So you've you've got a competition. So let's say it's one of the, the important ones. Mm -hmm. So you're really focusing on mm -hmm. it. And you've talked to us like briefly through like the the six week camp. So let's not get into that. But in regard to actual tactics, game plan, psychology, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. So I've mentioned it before about a sort of A game, B game. So, you know, most people, they just go to a competition and be like, well, I'll just see what happens. I'll see what happens. But if you look at the stats, it's Sounds like, <laughs> <laughs> it's all of us at the yeah. lower level. It's all of us because, and also the, the, the knowledge is not there yet to sort of put it in. And also the pressure, just competing is just like horrible. Yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 it was. Um, but the stats are like, I think if you score first in IBJGF, it's like 80% chance that you're going to win. The point system I didn't like when I first started because I was just like, well, it's, you, some people just play for the points. But then what I've realized over time is points dictate control. And then what I've developed now is a, a game where I can control somebody very well, um, which then does lead to submission. So the points thing is, is a bit strange. But what I would say is you work on your A game. So if you're going to competition, you should know what the, what the first thing you, you're going to do is. And at least that should be, are you going to pull guard or are you going to take down? You can guess most big guys want to want to take down and be on top. Most school, most small guys are going to um, pull guard. So if I was a big guy now coming into it at a white belt, I would just say, well, if I just learn the guard for four years, don't get tied to the outcome of these smaller comps or any white belt competition. Don't even worry about what you what you medal or what you don't medal on those. And work on your guard for like five, six years. And then you pull guard at like Brian Belt against another guy that doesn't know that much guard. And because it's hard for the big guys to train against other big guys that have got good guards. They can train against smaller guys with good guards, but not big guys that can sort of generate the same force as them. Mm -hmm. Learn guard is just like Gordon Ryan's done really. Gordon Ryan's was small in the start, um, technical, obviously. And then now he's like. <laughs> Insane, jacked, yeah, <laughs> and he's got a technique behind him as well. Yeah. So if you notice on most comps that he does, he's, you know, he lets them take him down, and then he plays guard. Yeah, and so you can sort of structure your game around that. Um, but all of us, we get tied to the outcome of those smaller competitions, or even the the big competitions, but a lower bout. So most big guys will try and take down. But they might win that takedown battle in the gym because they're normally training against smaller guys. I've seen some most competitions with big people, they just headbutt each other for like five minutes. And I'm like, oh, come on, just show some jiu-jitsu, please. And then you get the other aspect at the bottom where they both do double guard pulls and nobody wants to stand up. You're like, one of, one of you just take the... Because you get an advantage for standing up or taking top position if you both do a good double guard pull. Okay, I didn't know that. But one of them won't take it because they both know they're better on their, on their back. Yeah, so okay. it's a strange situation to be in. I think middleweight's like the perfect sort of tactic. So you should know exactly what you want to do there and then. Take down or, or guard pull. If it's a guard pull, it should be into that A game. So into your A guard, whatever that is. And then you should know those two sweeps that we talked about before at least or two submissions and it should just follow that spider diagram. Um, if it's a takedown, you know, you should hopefully take down to some kind of control. So a side control or mount. And then if it's one of them, you should then know your game from that position. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the tactics I would do approaching it. Um, but the, the truth is with competition, sometimes the guy before you is, you know, hasn't cut weight and, and you've cut weight. So he's got more energy than you. He's got a buy and you've just had a battle a minute before and then you're back on the mats again. The ref's on his side and not on your side. So some of these competitions, like you can plan and try and develop all these games and systems in place, but some of them, it's just not your day. It's not your day. And, and the truth is, you just got to compete for a long time. And I do think it's, it's the, well, you know, I've gone from white belt to sort of blue belt and achieved quite some good medals there in a short amount of time. But I only think that's down to sort of um, competitions and stuff like that and just keep doing it, keep showing up, keep doing it, keep pushing hard. And eventually you'll get good. It just takes a long time. <laughs>